classic video games get lost to time due to many factors, like being stuck on an old console or no longer being compatible to play on modern hardware. For the lucky few, they get given a brand new lease on life to shine brighter than they'd ever done before by being remastered, reaching a whole new audience and making new fans. But for Tomb Raider, it feels like ever since the Survivor trilogy dropped that the series had been desperately trying to make people forget the very roots the series had stemmed from. Instead of celebrating its history like other franchises had done, like Spyro and Crash, which were brilliant reimaginings of all-time classic games, it almost felt like that we were being told to forget Core Design's original adventures for Lara and to cast them off as old old and outdated and not worth revisiting. Well, that changes today. Assembled by a crack team of people who originally worked on porting these games to Mac computers back in the 90s, as well as a collection of extremely talented members of the Tomb Raiding community, some of which I've even featured on my channel, Tomb Raider 1 to 3 Remastered brings three of the best Tomb Raider games ever made to PC and modern consoles, including the PS4. And what I love about these remasters is the clear level of care and love that has been poured into every aspect of it. As soon as I booted up the game and saw all the beautifully crafted and recreated menu screens for all three titles, now in HD with a new character model for Lara and all in widescreen with their original music for each game, I knew that this was going to be something special. Loading into Croft Manor for the first time and seeing all the carpets, bookcases, paintings, decorations, musical instruments and the Ark of the Covenant not only brought into HD fidelity with amazing accuracy to their original counterparts, but also now packed with more detail than ever before, had me giddy at the thought of how the rest of the game's locations would look. And I'm happy to report that not only did these environments meet the same high standards set by my initial impression, but they managed to be exceeded on multiple occasions. Iconic locations like St. Francis Folly, the Lost Valley, the Great Wall, Venice, Nevada, India, and Atlantis had never looked better. In an age of retro revivals, it's great to see that this collection embraced and retained the original blocky retro aesthetic and used that as a base to build upon to make things look even better, as it would have been very easy for them to drastically change each level like they did for Anniversary. But they took the time to not only recreate each location in loving detail, but also enhance them to make them more immersive than ever before. Each location now benefits from a new lighting engine to really help make them pop and breathe new life into these undiscovered realms of myth and legend. Via and lava in rooms now glow with a deep orangey red light, toxic waste gives off a radioactive green hue, and the blue hues from a water source can all have a direct effect on the look of an environment, meaning that some locations will likely end up looking quite dramatically different to how you remember them. But god damn does it look good. Because of this, some concessions were needed to be made for Tomb Raider 1, as this game didn't originally have a lighting engine per se, and instead relied upon baked-in lighting to light up all of its levels. So you may occasionally notice a new crack or hole in the ceiling where devs have taken a couple of creative liberties to create new light sources. Of course, with light there's also shadow, and in these remasters they look fantastic, with the new real-time shadows that cast off of all objects, items and characters, further enhancing the game's art style. Each of the game's locations also come with brand new skyboxes, which help to improve the overall aesthetic and immersion. Industrial places like Thames Wharf now look like they're part of an urban environment, Nevada Sunkissed Desert now looks amazing, but the ones I can potentially see splitting opinion are the ones for Tomb Raider 1's levels. Gone is the dark, sprawling blackness of those levels, and instead we now have appropriately tailored skyboxes to reflect the current time of day that brings a different kind of vibe to each location. I personally really dig how these look, but I can totally see how some of the more hardcore fans would be a little put off by them, as it does change the look of some areas. Thankfully though, if you wish to relive the original versions of these games, then a simple press of a button is all it takes to switch to classic mode, where all of these games can be lovingly relived in their 90s glory and in widescreen for the first time officially. What's also another first is the fact that this collection comes with each game's PC-exclusive expansion pack for the first time ever on console. This brings yet more content to the table that likely a lot of people would have never even known to have existed before playing it here, and it's also the first time these expansions have been made officially and legally available since the 90s, making it easier than ever before to give them a try. A big thing to note here with these though is that they don't come with their own dedicated save slots, meaning that you have to overwrite a previous save slot from the main games in order to keep your progress. It's a little bit of an oversight, but one that can hopefully be resolved in a future update, so just bear that in mind if you give these a try. 
Speaking of the save system, each game uses the same multiple save slot system found in the PC releases, so you're no longer limited to just one save slot and can make as many saves as you wish and at any point. But those lamenting the lack of save crystals needn't fret, as each game has a brand new New Game Plus mode that you can unlock after beating it once, which not only adds save crystals back in, but also ups the challenge by increasing enemy damage and health. With a new coat of paint also comes the promise of a new way to control Lara in these games, with a brand new control scheme created especially for this collection to, in theory, allow players a more accessible way to play these classic titles. In the settings menu you have the new option to toggle between the classic tank control scheme and the new modern control scheme, and all I have to say is I don't completely hate this new control scheme. But it is weird. It took some getting used to because I essentially had to unlearn every habit that I had baked into me since I started my retrospective. By the way, go check them out, they're great, trust me, wink wink. But I imagined a lot of people who have played the Survivor or Lao era Tomb Raider games would have no problem getting immediately stuck in here. However, I would be lying if I said that it was completely flawless, as there are some weird caveats that ultimately made me switch back to the original control scheme for the majority of my playthrough. For one thing, you can't perform backflips or side flips unless you have a weapon drawn out, which can make some of the jumps where you need to use a slope to reach a ledge but facing the right direction when you're sliding down it actually harder to pull off than easier. During combat is where I'd say this new control scheme really shines, as the added mobility means that you're not constantly bumping into enemies that move way faster than you and you can actually dodge and weave around them whilst still firing back and don't have to spend time flipping around the place to avoid attacks. The vehicle controls are about what you'd expect for a control scheme like this, and whilst it sadly didn't make the kayak any more tolerable to use, it did give the rest of the game's vehicles a different feel that I can see people preferring. It's not all bad with the modern control scheme, as you can now hold the grab button just as you're about to run off a ledge and Lara will perform an auto grab to save yourself from falling. And also, after you've pressed the grab button on ledges or stuff that you're wanting to climb up onto, you don't have to keep the button held down the whole time anymore, meaning it frees up your hand to do other maneuvers. The modern controls aren't the only control scheme that get a bag of new tricks, as for the first time in Tomb Raider 1, you can perform the quick turn moves that you can do in Tomb Raider 2. And also they decided to add a move to Tomb Raider 3 that I've actually seen used in custom level sets before, where if you just crouch on the spot and don't move, and then press the sprint button, she then does a forward roll motion that ends up making her look like Sonic the Hedgehog. It's honestly nuts. Ultimately, whether or not you like these new controls will come down to personal preference, and I'm glad these weren't a replacement of the original controls and that you have the choice to toggle between them whenever you like to in the options menu. Speaking of the options menu, I have to say that the offering of settings here to change are pretty bare bones, all things considered. You have the ability to change your button layout and adjust the volume levels, and toggle the on-screen prompts letting you know where you can interact with an object or collect an item, a very bloody useful new feature I might add, but aside from those, you have no real visual options to adjust here. So for those maybe looking to adjust the gamma or the brightness to their liking, or contrast maybe, are out of luck. Even something like changing V-Sync or resolution or whether or not you want the game to run in full screen or windowed modes on PC are completely absent, which isn't a deal breaker for a game like this, but it was certainly something I was expecting to see in some capacity. But honestly, you won't have to worry about adjusting anything like that because this game performs fantastically at a rock solid 60 frames per second and at your monitor or TV's native resolution, which in this case was 4K. Sadly, the 60 frames option only really applies to the remastered version of these games as the classic mode runs at 30 frames per second, but for both versions they run in a full widescreen format giving a much clearer view of your surroundings. Surroundings that you'll want to take in using the game's new photo mode, which allows you to press a button to freely detach the game's camera to fly around the level and take snaps of anything you feel like. Not only can you fully rotate, pan, tilt, and adjust your shot's field of view, but you can also select a variety of different poses for Lara to make, adjust her facial expression, change her outfit to any from all three games, or even change what weapon she's holding so you can take the perfect snap. I have to admit I had so much fun using this to take some meme-worthy pictures that I had to stop myself from using this feature so much so I could get this video out on time. Making Lara look like she's posing on top of a recently deceased T-Rex, or making her stop for a selfie with an Atlantean mummy, are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what you can do with this mode, and it's a fantastic addition that adds yet more value to a great collection of games. 
Sadly, any kind of muzzle flashes or other visual effects that you try to capture with the camera mode don't seem to actually come up when you go into this mode. And it also would be nice to have the ability to adjust things like maybe filters or camera exposure in this mode, but considering this mode wasn't even part of the original game to begin with and they've effectively managed to add it into this remaster collection using black magic or something, I can't really complain. Aside from the new health bars for bosses, most of the brand new additions like items and objects now having button prompts also transfer over to the classic graphics as well. And it's really cool to see them take the time to do this and not just go for the easy win and do a basic port over with emulation instead. There's a whole bunch of neat content that's been either created exclusively for these remasters or some that's actually cut content that's been brought back to life, which I won't spoil here, but it just goes to show how much care and attention has been given to making these remasters the definitive way to play these games. In terms of audio, there's not really a whole lot to say here, except for one notable spoilery exception, you're going to be hearing the exact same music, sound effects, and voice lines from the original games that you're used to, which is honestly a very good thing. I will say that there were a couple of sound effects that nearly took my bloody ears off a few times due to how they've been mixed, but other than that, these are the same crunchy, authentic sounding Tomb Raider games that you played back in the day. Finally, let's talk about Lara's new look, as she's now been given a character model that bridges the gap between her FMV and in-game counterparts to give the game a much better sense of visual continuity. Gone are the days of having her having the same blank expression on her face, only with an angry face for those very special occasions, and now we have a fully expressive character that reacts to her environment or the situation that she's in. You also have for the first time fully animated in-game cutscenes with characters actually lip-syncing the dialogue they're speaking. And whilst this is really, really amazing to see, they decided to keep the same head bobbing from the original games, which can often make these characters look like they're talking bobbleheads having a seizure. I'm not sure if this is something hard-baked into the game that they couldn't change due to technical reasons, but I am hoping that maybe in a future update this could be ironed out in some way so that they only bob their heads like this in the classic graphics mode and not in the remastered graphics mode. The rest of Tomb Raider's cast of characters have also received the glow-up treatment, bringing everyone in line with the same level of quality and fidelity, even going as far as to recreate those crazed expressions the animals had in Tomb Raider 1 for ultimate nostalgia. Some die-hard fans might not like the new looks of certain characters like Larson or Pierre, but for the rest of you I think you'll be more than happy with how they've been reinterpreted here. All of Lara's outfits have been lovingly recreated with stunning details on each belt, buckle, holster, and fabric, with only one exception being the Solar logo on the wetsuit being replaced with a new logo, likely for licensing reasons. The iconic braid now joins her for the first time in Tomb Raider 1, meaning we sadly have to say bye-bye to the taped-up bun of yesteryear. Though I have to admit during my playtesting, I did notice the braid in modern graphics exhibiting some rather strange behaviours during gameplay, and sadly that wasn't the only chink in the remaster's armour I noted whilst playing. It's clear that there is still some fine tuning to be done with this current build of the game, as when testing I noticed a few oddities with some of the levels, character models and the new control scheme, as well as some other bugs during the in-game game cinematics. There were instances where the shadows in certain areas would dance around in unnatural ways, or sometimes I'd see textures from other areas clip through the room I was standing in. All very slight issues that rarely happened, and no doubt that they will be resolved in a day one or late month patch. However, there were other more severe issues I encountered during my playthrough that will hopefully be addressed in future patches as well. The water at the beginning of St. Francis Folly, for example, was pre-drained before I got there, meaning that I had no choice but to go for the secret ledge in order to save myself from being stuck stuck in a death loop, or in Palace Midas where I'd enter the pillar puzzle room only to find the room already destroyed and the pillar collapsed like I'd been there before. Another bizarre issue that was exclusive to the modern control scheme was when I went to use the enemy skidoos in the Tibet level, only to find out that when I pressed the fire button to use the guns on board it then put the skidoo into reverse as well, meaning that I couldn't drive around and shoot at the same time, which is a little bit odd. A couple of these I was eventually able to resolve by loading a save from a previous level and then playing up until that point again, but it definitely put a slight dampener on an otherwise fantastic experience. Again, these sorts of things will likely be resolved in patches in the future, but it was a little bit disappointing to see these in the build that I was playing. Sadly, for all the care that's been given to the rest of these games, the same can't really be said for the FMVs, which have all been upscaled using AI, but to a point where the on-screen text looks abysmal and a lot of the smaller details have been all smudged over. 
And I get that they likely didn't have access to the original FMV files as those have likely been lost to the sands of time, but when compared to similar efforts made by fans, some even going as far as to fix the text, it just seems very low effort here. But all in all, this does nothing to dampen what is otherwise a fantastic and much needed collection of some of the best retro puzzle platformers ever made. Tomb Raider fans have been waiting a very, very long time for a collection like this, and after being given early access to this game by Crystal Dynamics and Aspire and having a decent week of hands-on time with it, I can safely say that this collection has been worth the agonizing wait. The remastered character models, the updated graphics, 60 frames per second gameplay, restored beta content, the photo modes, over 250 achievements to earn which pay homage to the fan community and to speedrunning techniques, the remade loading screens, the new control scheme, and the icing on the cake being the inclusion of all the expansion packs make this remastered collection a must-own for any Tomb Raider fan. Now all they need to do is make a physical release of this collection and I'll be happy as Larry. Welcome home, Miss Croft. We've missed you.